In the last two years, I've generated multiple six figures on Amazon FBA and I've gone from starting at my house to now owning a mini warehouse of my own. When I began my Amazon FBA journey, I had so many questions which I had to answer myself from learning from my mistakes. This is why I have created this series where I'll be answering your Amazon FBA queries and this is actually the second episode and you can go watch the first episode right here or here after the video. Like the previous video, all questions will be split into three sections going from basic to advanced. However, I recommend you watch the entire video as there might be some information in some sections which might benefit you. And after the video, if you still have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section of this video and I'll answer it in the next episode. Section number one, newbies. So the first question is whether you require a seller's permit if you're in the US to sell on Amazon. Now, I do recommend you get a seller's permit if you're in the US because it will allow you to get access to more wholesalers because in the US, every single wholesaler or most wholesalers do require you to have a seller's permit. Question number two is, can I open an account in another country if I live in another country? Now, if your country does not have Amazon FBA, like for example, this person is in Denmark and they don't have Amazon FBA in their country, I don't recommend you opening an account in another country because most likely you might need some documents from that country, which means you won't be able to open your account at all. Question number three is, there's a lot of resources out there like your amazing channel, thank you so much, but there is not much in terms of accessibility for help for sellers. Do you have any idea on places to reach out to on general help and potential mentorship? Thanks, Chats. Now I'm holding a free webinar on the 26th of February, 2023, where I'll be going literally in the whole concept of how Amazon FBA wholesale works and everything will be in that webinar. So if you do wanna join that webinar, you can use the link in the description to sign up. It's free by the way, so you can just go in the link and fill in your details and you will get the details to the webinar. And in terms of help or asking questions, again, you can leave any questions in the comment sections of this video and I'll try my best to answer it either straight in the comment section or in the next episode of this video. Question number four from Bobby is about whether he should go ahead and get an LLC and a wholesale license before before even making an account on Amazon FBA? My answer is yes, do that because once you have an account on Amazon, you can sign up as a limited company through Amazon and you will also be able to directly start getting accounts with wholesalers and it will make your life easier to find good products. Plus Bobby mentioned he will be able to get ungated. So with Amazon, there are certain categories and products you will be gated in, which means you won't be able to sell those products unless you have an account with a wholesaler and you will need to buy 10 units of that exact product in order for you to basically submit your invoice on Amazon when you do the application to get ungated and that's how you get ungated. So yes, do get a LLC and a wholesale license. The next question is, hey Jets, hope you're well. I wanted to ask, if I do retail arbitrage, I'm gonna list a product that's already listed on Amazon, right? Yes, you'll be listing products which are already listed on Amazon with Amazon arbitrage and Amazon wholesale. Only when you do Amazon private label, that's when you have to create a brand new listing for a product which you have manufactured in China. The next question is about which printer should I buy to print my labels? Now, in every video, I always say you can buy any printer you want, but I'm gonna link the printer which I use, which is kind of efficient in the way that it's cheap, plus it does a thousand prints for every ink I inject into the printer. So I'll leave the link for that printer in the description. The next question is whether it is worth starting Amazon FBA and if you do start Amazon FBA, how long does it take to get a return on your investment? Now my answer to this question is going to be a bit biased because I do Amazon FBA. So it's gonna be yes, it's worth starting it because you simply have to find a good product and then send it off to Amazon and Amazon will take care of all the picking, packing and shipping to the customers and they will take care of the customer service, which makes it really easy, however, when I mean easy, the business model is easy, but finding good products and scaling your business is not that easy. So try it out. If you do like the process, then you can continue doing it. If you don't like it, you can just stop doing it. And you can start with Amazon Arbitrage, which doesn't even require an investment of a thousand or two, three, four thousand pounds. You can start with Amazon Arbitrage with as little as 200 pounds or $250. And to get your return on investment on 200 or 250 pounds, it can really depend on your ROI. So if you find a product with 100% ROI, and you you spend 200 pounds on all those products, then in one go, one order, you're basically making your return on investment. The next question is, is it better to register as a private limited company or a sole trader? Now, when you register as a sole trader, your personal assets are under liability, which means if something goes wrong in your business, then all your personal assets can be taken away by banks or any companies which basically you have a debt with. Whereas with a limited company, everything is liable under the limited company, which means none of your personal assets are going to be affected if 
your company goes bankrupt. So my answer to the question to make it simple is to begin with, it is okay to start as a sole trader, but eventually it's best to convert your Amazon account into a limited company by obviously registering your limited company or an LLC or a corporation, depending on whether you're in the US or Canada. The next question is about doing a shipping plan or sending products to Amazon. And this person said, for example, let's say I buy a pack of crayons. I buy 50 of them. When I pack them and send them to Amazon, would I put all 50 packs in one box with the right label? The answer is yes. You can simply pack all your products in one box, obviously if they fit in one box, and make sure individual units of those 50 crayons are labeled. So you have to label each unit, which means 50 units has to be labeled, and they go all in one box, and you have to pack the box and simply send it off to Amazon. Amazon will individually pick one, depending on how much the customer orders. If the customer orders two or three, they will take three and put it in a box and then send it off to that customer. Cool, that was end of section one. Section two is for beginners, people who have actually started selling on Amazon, but they're just getting started. The next question is, if you wanna sell a product on Amazon, is the first choice to go to the actual supplier and get the product from them, or it is to add the product into inventory first. Now here's a rule, right? Here's a rule you must follow when it comes to selling on Amazon. Always add the product first in your inventory. The reason being is because sometimes a product might be hazmat, might be a dangerous good, might be a product that Amazon does not store in their warehouses. And if that's the case, then you adding the product to inventory will give you the confirmation that this product does not have any issues. So that if you do go ahead and purchase 100 units of that product, then it's not going to waste and you don't have to waste your time returning the products or even basically taking a loss. The next question is, where is the best place to find winning products? The answer to that question is Google. Now, I, it's definitely not the best answer, but let me explain a bit more. When you find a product, whether that's through a research method of going on, of opening an account with a wholesaler and you're going through a catalog, you simply copy the name of that product. First, make sure it's on Amazon. If it is on Amazon, then the next step is to simply go on Google, type in the name of that product, followed by the keyword wholesaler or distributor or trader, and then simply do UK, US, wherever you are, press enter. Now you will get a list of hundreds, if not two, three, four hundred suppliers who are selling that exact same product. Your goal is to basically find the cheapest possible supplier out there. The next question is, if you're a brand new seller on Amazon FBA, what categories are gated and what products are you allowed to sell? So when you do begin selling on Amazon, you're mainly gated in almost all the categories except the basic ones, but the top five ones which you should be ungated in first is baby products, health and personal care, groceries, pet supplies, and beauty. These are the five categories which most products you will find would be from these categories. So try and get ungated in these five categories. And if you don't know how to get ungated, I've mentioned it in my last episode. So you can go check it out in that after this video. And in terms of what products are you allowed to sell, you're basically allowed to sell any products from any brands as long as there are more than two or three sellers on that listing. To find out how many sellers there are, you can simply scroll down on a listing to the buy box area, click on that, and you'll be able to see multiple people selling the exact same product. If you see more than two or three, that means it's a product you can sell and you should be able to find that exact same product with either wholesaler or the brand itself. The next question is about the best way to work out your fees and basically every cost related to your Amazon account or your set, that product you're selling to find your exact amount of profit or ROI. Now the best way to do it is actually after the product has been sold because after it's been sold, at the end of every month, you can generate a report from your Amazon's payment section. And then if you go to generate reports, you can generate monthly reports for your entire Amazon account, where you will be able to see your exact amount of fees, any referral fees or any additional fees that has been charged for that product. And you can see how much you have made back in total from that sale. And that would be your revenue. So from that, all you need to do is then take away the cost of that product, cost per unit, and that will give you your total profit, which can allow you to calculate your ROI as well. The next question is again about ungating, but she's asking if she can buy a product from a retailer or she will always have to buy that specific product from a wholesaler. Now, here's the thing. Let's say you're gated to sell a Lego item or a Lego branded product, right? And you you, you're seeing so many opportunities in Walmart or Asda or wherever you go. And you're like, um, oh, I wanna buy this product, but I'm gated. Here's what you need to do. 
You need to find a wholesaler who's selling Lego based products. All you need to then do is find the cheapest Lego product with that wholesaler and buy 10 units of that product. And remember that product should exist on Amazon as well. Once you have bought that product, then you need to go on your Amazon account, add that exact Lego product which you have bought from the wholesaler and you'll be asked to get ungated. And this is when you can simply fill in the application and put that exact invoice which you bought from the wholesaler onto the application and you'll be ungated for the entire Lego brand. So once that's done, then you can simply go ahead and go in Walmart, Asda, wherever you wanna go and buy any Lego products, even if it's three units, four units, whatever it is, you can start doing that. The next question is from Oliver and he's asking, Jats, which Jungle Scout package is the best to start with if you're just getting started with Amazon FBA? Now, with Jungle Scout, I do have a discount link where you can get their 59 or 69 pound package for 34 pounds, which is 50% off for one month. So I would recommend you get that for one month, try it out. If you don't like it, then you can always cancel it. But in that way, you're basically getting the main package, which is an all-in-one suit for half the price or even cheaper than their most basic package, which is I think around $49. So get that package using the link in the description. And basically you will have all the tools from Jungle Scout to use. If you don't like it, can leave. The next question is from JLC Gaming about whether Amazon will compensate you if they damage or lose your products. The answer is yes, they will compensate you on exact amount or how much you have paid for that from an actual wholesaler. They will ask for an invoice to make sure you're not lying to them and then they will compensate you for that amount. The next question is from TikTok user asking, can you sell any branded products such as Disney products, Lego or not Lego? fairy washing up liquid? The answer is yes. You can sell most branded products on Amazon. Again, to make sure if you're able to sell that brand or not, you simply need to go in the buy box and check if there are multiple people selling that product. If that product is being sold with a wholesaler, most likely you're gonna be able to resell that product on Amazon. But to confirm if you can sell that brand or not, check the buy box to make sure there are more than two or three sellers selling that same product. The next question is from Two Hin asking, once I have shipped my product off to Amazon, will it automatically be listed on Amazon? And when a customer orders, will Amazon automatically ship and pack and deliver that product to my customer? Yes, Amazon will do everything. Once your product reaches to Amazon, Amazon will count to make sure the amount of units you have stated in the shipping plan matches the amount you have put in the box. You will be on the buy box and whenever a customer orders and you're winning the buy box, you will make a sale. And you can check all the orders you receive in your seller account, but Amazon won't kind of keep bothering you every single time that you have got an order. I mean, they do, you can disable the notification, but that just depends on what you want. And if you live in Italy, yes, you can sell in the entire Europe, but I recommend you sell in the same country as you are from because if you do sell in other countries and you're doing Amazon wholesale, then your profit per unit can slightly go down because the shipping charges Amazon will charge you will be slightly higher for every sale made in another country. So I recommend sticking to the same marketplace where you're from. And now moving on to the expert section questions. The first question is, thank you for this in-depth info. Wish I found your channel earlier. I have a question for you. I was previously told that I need an LTD to do wholesale and now HMRC is looking to take 135 pounds off me. At first, I sold a few items by, by FBA, then the account was suspended, never knew why. The only way to reactivate is to have an LTD, which I got. How comes I need to pay so much? You mentioned that when you make in the thousands, then one have to pay. Hope this makes sense. Really looking forward for your response. So when you do get started with Amazon FBA, there are two choices or when you do open your account, there are actually multiple choices. Like you can open as a sole trader, you can open as an individual, you can open as a limited company or a non-profit. To begin with, I did say, if you don't open a limited company, you can open as an individual to kind of do for your first few sales. Sometimes when you make a sale, it triggers the Amazon system and they will ask you for all your proof as an individual. And if you don't provide that proof, then it will suspend your account and it will say, if you are making sales on Amazon, you will have to switch to a limited company, which is where you simply have to open a limited company or register a limited company in the UK, it's 12 pounds. And once you are registered, they will simply need your company registration number, company name and company address, and your account will be back to normal. Your account entity will simply change to a limited company rather than an individual. But I have no idea why HMRC charged you 135 pounds because to open a limited company, you won't really have to 
pay them that much. The next question is from Grieve, Gre Gre okay, I'm not even gonna pronounce that, but he's basically asking, why do we need to order that product from the wholesaler to our house? Can't we just pay the wholesaler to do quality assurance and directly ship it off to Amazon? Yes, you can do that, but 70% of wholesalers don't actually offer that service. They will clearly state that we will not ship it directly to Amazon and they will send it to your home. But if your wholesaler or the wholesaler you're working with or the brand you're working with does directly ship it to Amazon and they don't charge you more to do quality assurance, then go ahead and do that. The next question is by Mohammed Abar regarding the Q4 challenges you face as a new seller. Now Q4 is basically the fourth last three months of a year, which is basically the most busiest time of the year for Amazon. And as a seller, you make the most money. However, as a new seller, it's a bit difficult because number one, every brand or every wholesaler you contact most likely is out of stock for all of their products because all the existing sellers have bought the entire stock, which means you will not find a lot of products in stock with wholesalers. And secondly, when you do contact brands or wholesalers to make an account with them, they might say no, because at that stage, they're having so much orders and like they're so busy that they don't have time to kind of work with new customers or new clients. So that's kind of the few things you do face, the problems you face in Q4. But once again, in Q4, you can make a lot of money even as a beginner, because if you do find one product that is in stock and you send it off to Amazon, you're gonna make a lot of money. The next question is from someone in Turkey. Firstly, for what happened in Turkey, really feel sorry for that. But to answer your question, how do you avoid fights or competition in the buy box with other sellers? Because in wholesale specifically, when you do jump on a listing, there might be someone in that listing who might start taking their price down because they wanna win the buy box most of the times and they wanna make the most money and they're greedy and that will lead to you making less profit. Now, how do you deal with them? There are multiple ways. There are a few pricing strategies, which I usually discuss, but one of them and the most basic one is just be patient, right? If a person is price cutting you, first try and price match them. And then they're still price cutting you, then don't try and compete with them because if you do, then you both will eventually end up in a position where you're making either breaking even with on your product or you're making no profit at all. So I would be, I would just say, be patient, let that person sell out. And most likely, if they have taken their price so down just to make sales, then they're not gonna jump back on that listing. And when they don't jump back on that listing, you can continue making profit on that product. Next question is from Ali regarding winning the buy box, who states that if there is one seller, one FBM seller on a listing, and you jump on as an FBA seller, would you win the buy box regardless of price? Usually, if you jump on a listing where there's only one FBM seller, then I recommend not doing that because if it's an FBM seller, it could be that person's product. So just make sure there are at least two or three, or at least more than three FBM sellers. The price can only be more than one pound or two pounds than the FBM seller, because if you go anything over that, you will not win the buy box. The reason why you as an FBA seller can increase your price by a pound or two, or sometimes even three pounds, because it's next day delivery plus Amazon makes more money if they let you win the buy box. Because obviously FBA sellers have to pay more fees to Amazon compared to FBM fees. The next question is about, I was wondering how many products do you suggest buying for a product? Now, this is a really important question. The reason why is because you always wanna make sure you never run out of stock once you send a product off to Amazon. Because if you do run out of stock, then it does affect your Amazon kind of performance level or your inventory performance index. So you never wanna run out of stock. But how do you make sure you you have enough stock or you know this is the number of units I need to send to make sure it lasts for this amount? You basically need to do a test shipment first of a product. Once you have sent a test shipment of let's say 20 units to kind of see if this product is selling or how fast is it selling, and you figure out that in one week, 20 units are gone. So if one week, 20 units were gone, that means in order for me to have enough stock for two months, I will need to send 20 times eight because eight weeks in two months that you can do the maths. I don't know. What's the maths of two times? Two times eight, 160 units. You need to at least have 160 units so that it lasts for two months. But sometimes you could sell that out a lot faster than you thought. In that case, just overestimate a bit and send in around 180 units. Now this question is from Bob Rich Heat Insulation Co LLC. <laughs> if our item has other sellers with same price, 
whose item moves out first. So this person is basically talking about the buy box. If there are multiple people selling the exact same product in the buy box, who wins the buy box most of the times? The number one factor to winning the buy box is the price. Whoever has the cheapest price usually wins the buy box. But if you price match that person with the lowest price, you can split share the buy box as well. So two hours of the day, it could be the other person, two hours of the day, it could be you, two hours of the day, it could be someone else as well. But price is one of the factors. The other factors could also be on how old their account is. If they have so many reviews, like a thousand reviews or ratings on their seller account, then that is also another factor. And there are a few other factors which could affect, but once again, price is the most important one. I hope at this point, most of your questions and doubts are clear, but obviously there's a lot more to running a business like this. And that is the reason why every week I'm dropping new Amazon FBA related videos so I can cover almost everything, which is the reason why you need to make sure you're subscribed and turn the bell on so every time I upload, you get notified. However, in the meantime, I literally have a whole guide on how to do Amazon FBA wholesale, which you can go check out here. And I'll see you in that video. Take care, have an amazing day and peace.